Hello, this is Marcelo Chermak, and I'm here to uh, continue our third installment of our class and trigonometry expressions and the math functions in real flow. Remember that this is a very basic uh, class, in, it's a very uh, primary class, and uh, additional information is on the real flow website and the help menu within real flow. So let's take a look at this QuickTime movie that I made for you. And uh, this project will have two parts. One, the first part is a null controlling a parameter within emitters. And the second part is how to access the trigonometry functions within the graph node window or the simulation flow graph node. So let's play back this and take a look. As you can see in the very beginning here, this yellow node in the back is going up and Y. And as it passes the position of this circle uh, emitter, it launches the emitter right great so what is the practical use of this just first of all this scene is very chaotic and has a lot of splash and it's kind of interesting but it's not very useful what is useful here is to use one object one of the null in this case to drive the parameters of other uh uh, nodes in the scene, in this case, uh, emitters. So uh, let's take a look how this was done. If you go into the null, first of all, let's go into the null and open edit curve and go into the, the Y uh, function of that. And what I did here is I wrote something that says, which we have seen before, if uh, the frame is less than 80 time the initial speed would be time multiply by 2 or otherwise if anything above 80 that should remain at 6.58 where did I get that number from what did I I did was I went into the at frame 79 and I took, I look where the position and Y was. So I saw that it was 6.8. Initially, I put here zero just to see, you know, where would it be? Uh, but I don't want it going back to zero. I want it to stay at 6.58, which is the position where um, the initial part of this expression takes the null. And I did that just to remind you that you can get that information from uh, the node parameter window. So if we close that now and we take a look again to this. So what happened? As that goes up, the initial uh, velocity or the initial speed of the emitter was zero. And as that null passes by, it become another uh, velocity in this case I think was five but let's, let's take a look so circle one um, it's five right so if I added a curve to see what I did I can place this here and I can tell you that if no one position and Y is less than the circle one position and Y the speed is zero Otherwise, it will be a speed of five. So as long as the null position in Y is below the circle, the speed will be zero. The emission speed will be zero. Anything different than that will be five. So let's close this and take a look again. And there's uh, open last preview and let's take a look at that again so it's exactly what it does right which is perfect so now 
uh, like I mentioned before, what is the, how can we, this thing be useful? And, uh, well, you can set up scenes where one null drives uh, a lot of other uh, functions or parameters in other nodes. Also, what I had to do is I went to each one of them and I created variations of that expression. In this case, it's zero or seven and null three is zero or nine. And, uh, you know, I copy and paste and modify the speed of emission. And the circle four is zero or 11. I did that just to have some degree of animation. You can also put a random number there or a random function in this curve. You can add a that instead of uh, 11, you can put R and D and uh, you can put a random number and then that between parentheses you put let's say five will be a random number of five how do you i found that random i put i went into the functions the uh, unary functions and i found a random um uh null here r and g as you can see here right so that's uh, not uh, important at the moment. Let's go back to 11 to this is what I did. And uh, which is, you know, fine. Let's close this window again. And uh, if we now if we take a look over here in the other side, and if you highlight all my circle emitters, you can see that as the null, here goes up, it's launching that speed, which is good. You can do an animated uh, null in a way that it will uh, animate a fountain or dancing emitters or dancing spouts, or you can also use the same null to, uh, um, the position in Y could be a, a function for the, for example, the noise uh, demon. So you could use that not only to launch that, but to increase the noise, for example, on that, uh, on that, you know, uh, circle emitter. So now the second part of this thing, as you can see, is that the receptacle, which is this uh, cube, is moving up and down, right? So creating the additional splashes in it. I did that for several reasons, just to make it more interesting, to catch your attention, and also to explore how to do that. For example, so what, what would be my first thought? You do edit curve and you would come here and you would say, if, uh, or not if, but let's say cosine, of time multiply by 10, for example, actually multiply, not plus, multiply by 10 plus, let's say two. Then I would create that curve, you know, which the time multiply by 10 would create this uh, intensity here or the frequency. And uh, two would create, uh, let's say, if I put 20 here, it would create the uh, uh, where in uh, would create where in sp in uh, space this would be. So it would start at frame 20 and would go up and down uh, one, for example. So let's uh, delete this expression because that's not how I did it. Right, so let's close this down. How else could I have done it? How else could I have done this expression? So what I did was I hit Control F2 and I opened the simulation flow. Um, the simulation flow window graph creator. Let's delete this, guys. Uh, let's clear this guys out. And what I did was I came here and I right click 
and I said add graph. And then I right click again, I say rename, and then I put there an expression. For, this is what I did at first. I created under frame a pre, which is at, before every frame, they would select this, uh, they would uh, ex execute this expression. Kind of didn't work well because uh, it was not understanding where uh, should where the box should be. So what I did, I, I grab and I try in a few positions and obviously the most accurate position would be in the steps. Before every step, that expression will be executed. So let's delete uh, this, let's undo that and let's uh, right click here and remove that expression. And yes, so let's open up this guy and uh, as you remember the expression that I created in the parameters window, you're going to have a, a, so what I needed at that point was I need time, I need a cosine function, I need an add function, and I need the parameter itself. So let's go. So time, if I, if I hit tab, and I type time, it's going to give me the options of anything that has time on it. So the last, the second to last is get current frame and time. So in this case, I have the information here, what's the current time and the current frame. So then I have to multiply that by 10, as you remember my temp uh, expression there on the other editor. So multiply, so I go into, I can type mult, M-U-L, and then I immediately get the multiply function, right? So I have to multiply that by something, by a real number. So let's go there and say real, and there we go. There is a real uh, node, which I'm going to input put here 10, right? So I am um, first is time is going to go into the, I'm multiplying the first input and then real. And so I have the time, the current time multiplied by 10. So the next step is to feed this information to a cosine trigonometry function. So let's hit tab again. And let's go into math and let's look for cosine because cosine would be under math. So here, here we go. If we go up here and then you hit cosine and then you tap that, you connect that result of that multiplication into the cosine curve, right? So, um, so now after that, I added two, right? So let's see what I'm adding here on this thing. Uh, so I have add function, which I go back to the math function here, and I found add. And I'm going to connect, I'm going to, all the input of that cosine will be coming to the input uh, one or zero. And I needed another real, uh, so I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste here. And I'm going to bring this guy here, but... Uh, he is set up to 10. But in my uh, actual expression here, I add two, like I added before. So I'm going to bring this down to two. And now I have to feed all this information somewhere in the node parameter. So what I am going to do, I have to set that node parameter to be. Uh, so let me hit tab again, and I'm going to say set. Well, there's a lot of sets, so node, and then that my options are set, uh, set node export resource, check option value, which is not uh, what I'm looking for, set node export resource value, not, not that either, set node name, no, I don't need to set up the name, hold up, there's the last one is set node parameter, there we go. So in this set node parameter, if I hit this option box and I am trying to set up the cube, right? And you hit okay, 
cube one comes up. And what is the parameter that I am trying to, to set up is position, right? So I type position, position, and I is position Y. So it would be dot Y, right? So now I have my object and I have my parameter. So I'm gonna get that result. And when you bring that result, that's the only option that I have here, which you made it so easy, is the number value. So I connect the parameter to the no to the um, I correct I connect this curve to the number value of that information and then i have to get this and execute this or evaluate this so it can be executed so i hit tab again and i get an evaluated uh, evaluator node and then i will connect that so let unconnect let just connect this and let's close this window well i guess there's no uh if you have no other questions so again let's go over this i need time i need to multiply that time by a different number which is the real here and then i have to fit that in through through a cosine uh curve with that information on the cosine curve and then i'll get that information i want to add a more uh a, a larger range so i will add a two to that and that information is the only uh, connection. Here's the number value of that parameter. And the set node parameter, I was able to choose cube one or any other function here and the position in Y. So, and let's evaluate that in the end. Obviously, I don't have to do that again. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to close this and I'm let's go back to our old uh, simulation thing so now i have that cube moving up and down as we can see in our uh, last preview and it's going to open again as you see in the very beginning the bar the cube is moving up and down uh, based on that uh, cosine curve and it's splashing things around here obviously this is a pretty simple example i could have used something else more complicated but remember this is a very basic uh introduction to expressions and nodes and node or in, in this case using the node graph to uh create the expressions so i hope you enjoyed this class and I, you know, looking forward to create more tutorials for you. So this is a three part uh, expression tutorials uh, uh, about, you know, trigonometry, math functions, and in this case, procedural animation. We didn't use one, not even one keyframe on this, which is very helpful when you want to change your frames per second. Um, uh simulation and also you can change uh the uh, the objects on that uh no you can make that expression you know uh more interesting or you can add uh oh that's one other thing so we can should talk about is that when you have this you can create much more complex graph nodes and embed on that graph node an expression, for example, using the trigonometry functions in this guy, in this case, cosine. So you can create something really more complex. And it's important to know that you can access this information the same way you can access within the node parameter uh, window. And in this case would be uh, position at curve. So instead of using and create an expression here, you can access that same information here and using a more complex graph node, uh, you know, for your possible job. So it was very nice talking to you and uh, have a great week. And I hope you enjoy this tutorial.